Hello, everybody. Welcome to another advanced tutorial here on patreon.com forward slash Tim Michael Arts. Thank you very much for joining me in this one. This is another custom advanced tutorial for uh, one of my patrons who has requested this specifically. Uh, this will be something that uh, I am looking forward to uh, working on here, and that is basically working in masks in Manga EX5. Okay? So Manga Studio EX5. So I'm going to go ahead and start by opening up a new file. All right, and I, I usually like to do 11 by 14 uh, with a resolution of 300. That way uh, people can have it printed pretty high quality and stuff like that. Not everyone goes and prints from a big shop. Um, basically, what I'm going to do very quickly is just come up with a quick sketch that we can use to um, show you guys um, how this works. So let me go ahead and quickly draw something in here. Um, n no big deal what it is. I just want to make sure that... As I'm explaining this to you guys, it makes some sense. Okay, so, quick, stupid little sketch. I want to get a neck in here, and then I want to get a shirt in here, because that's going to be important. Okay, let's take that shirt down this way, and this way. Kind of looking a little like, hey, what's up, dudes? You know, and then some ears, and finally some hair. Okay, so let me go ahead and ink this in. I probably should have done this before I started this episode. Um, but still, that'll be fine. And I'm just going to very, very quickly just block this stuff in. That way you guys can see what I'm going to do here. But I'm going to keep this quick. So it's not about the good quality of my art this time. It's about just knocking this out so you guys can see how this works. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and very quickly block in just a cheap, simple design. Do, 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 do. I want to get some teeth in here. I think that'll help out with this example. Okay. Like I said, not about the artwork, all about the technique. Okay? Draw a chin in there. Some ears. Tiny little ears, why not? Okay. And the face. And finally the hair, which I'm going to specifically draw because it's going to be part of the tutorial, most likely. One, The two things I really want to talk to you guys about are masks and especially working with your transparency lock. They kind of go hand in hand, and I want to show you how that is so, okay? And I think at the same point in time, this is also going to talk a little bit about um, working with um, automatic fills and stuff like that. So you're going to see this all in a second um, as soon as I finish this annoying little sketch. Okay. So that's a guy with a really super high forehead. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. The thing about these advanced tutorials is they're supposed to be just me talking with you guys and taking care of your needs specifically. So as you guys support me on Patreon, um, or Patreon, I keep saying Patreon because you guys are my patrons, but um, as you guys continue to support me on Patreon, that allows me the opportunity to help you guys with some more very specific tutorials that only go to you guys here on Patreon. So I hope more people catch on and show up, and uh, if you guys can spread the good word, that would be great. Okay. So I got this sketch in here. It's fine enough. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my sketch layer so we can see. <laughs> oh, boy, that's terrible. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take the layer that I just inked, and I'm going to set that as my reference layer. And you can do that by that icon right here. Uh, it's called Set as Reference Layer. And what that's going to do is whatever I put in the fills with, which I'm going to show you in just a second, um, that's going to make sure that they don't go outside those lines. So I got that as my reference layer set. I'm going to go here to a new layer. I'm going to grab my fill bucket, and there is an option here, and it says multiple referencing, and you see this one here, and that says from reference layer. There's a couple different options, but from reference layer works very well. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a skin tone, and I'm going to hit fill, you're going to see it fills all this in real nice. Same here and there, and there we go. Okay, now I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm going to do the same thing with the teeth and the eyes, and you guys know what I like to do with that. I like using gray. So there we go. 
And take a look at this. This is very important. Even though I did not complete the art um, here, I didn't complete the line work like here and here, you can see it still filled it in anyway. That is a wonderful thing about uh, Manga Studio. It will kind of computerize, computerize, com computize, com who knows what that word is. Uh, it's going to take care of those little details for you. See, there you go. I just use the word take care and I feel better. All right. All right, so let me go back in here and quickly fill in these ears on the previous layer, make sure I got that right. I'm going to make a new layer for the hair and eyebrows, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that with just a, a darker black and just knock these in here real quick. Nope, that did the line. I didn't want to do the line. I wanted to do that little. There we go. Okay, same thing here. You can see it filled it down to this point of color here um, and didn't take it any further, which is kind of nice. But you can see here I left that area completely open, and sometimes that doesn't work. <laughs> so what I'll end up doing is I'll grab my pen tool, and I will fill in the rest, and I'll do cleanup uh, procedure. Now, like I said, though, color's on its own layer, which is, which is uh, a must um, to properly do all these techniques and things. So keep that in mind as you're going along here. And you can go back. And you can erase, like under this eye here, I want to make sure that's pretty straight so I can erase that and clean it up. You know, just take care of those little details like that. Um, the shirt, let me see, uh, let's do maybe like a green shirt. Uh, we'll do, we'll do a lime, lime green shirt. Fill, because he has no taste. There we go. And that's going to fill in everything because I just hit that, which I didn't want to do that. So I'll go ahead and just paint that in with my my uh, pen and I use my G pen even for doing color um, and it works fine for me you can use whatever tool you want each one has a different property but I I want everything to look computerized kind of digital you know look very computer generated so I actually prefer using you know normal lines and then I'll go ahead and just clean up my little areas here Okay, so now that I have these areas clean and I have them in their own layers, it's time to go ahead and talk about masking and working with uh, everything else that I've been talking about. If I was to go ahead and shade this face right now, let's say I wanted to put a darker tone around the outside of the face with an airbrush, I can select the color, get a darker tone, make my brush really big, and I can select my layer. And let me copy this layer so I don't lose what I have. And I'm going to start airbrushing, and you're going to see what's going to happen is that it's airbrushing everywhere, okay? And if I put it on the top layer, it's going to airbrush over the hair, it's going to airbrush over everything, it's going to mess everything up and not get what I want. The beautiful thing about um, any program these days, they all seem to have it, um, is the ability to lock out the transparency, or what would also be called um, uh, locking out the alpha if you work in uh, video, uh, like if you do video production work. So let's go ahead and lock out the transparency. Over here, there's a button here, and it's called Lock Transparency, uh, Lance Transparent Pixel. Basically what that means is um, if I turn off every other layer, except for the layer I've colored on, all the squares that you're seeing in this thing, that's your transparency. And basically it's saying everything on here that is that square it's going to say you cannot paint there. This is a wonderful tool. So I'm going to go ahead and hit lock on that. I'll turn on all my layers so we can see what happens. Okay, and uh, except for my sketch layer. I'll grab my airbrush and let's go ahead and try and airbrush them now. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It's a very cool little trick and it speeds up things so much because you're not having to clean up after the fact. I used to have to do clean up constantly and that was so annoying. Now let's uh, take a look at this. You see how I put it down here on the neck? Maybe I didn't want it on this neck down here. Maybe I wanted to separate it from the neck. You got a couple different options. You could have painted the neck on a separate layer, or what you can do is you can use a mask, and masks are really easy to work with. So what we'll do is we'll right click on this screen, and you can see that there's a selection from layer, and you hit select. You can see it puts a box around it. I mean, puts a puts the little what we call crawling ants around it. And if you want, you can make a new layer, or you can stay on that same layer and you can hit mask, which is this button right down here that's kind of grayed out now because I've already created that mask. You can look right here and you can see this panel. This panel has black and white. The white means you can paint there. The black means you can't. So if that's the case, 
it works in many different formats. There are so many different ways that you can use this. You can even use it with gradients. It's not just a hard line that is needed. You can do anything with this. But the nice thing about it is it gives you the opportunity to take things even further than you had before. Now let me go back and let's say we didn't want to color in the neck, okay? So what I can do is I can add or subtract from this uh, with my selection tool and I gotta remember how to find selection tools in here. Um, I'm gonna use my lasso marquee, which is this button here, lasso marquee, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit alt, which is gonna put a minus next to it. I'm gonna hold down alt and I'm gonna draw this circle and you're gonna see that it's gonna deselect the area that I've chosen, okay? Now it's got the neck deselected. And what I can do now is I can say, okay, let's go ahead and apply the mask on its own layer. Now I can work with the face on its own layer without affecting anything else. And the neck will be untouched as long as I'm painting in that layer. Something important, you see how there's a box around this layer here right now? You need to click away from it and get onto the normal layer. Otherwise, you're going to be affecting this layer. Because on here, if I'm correct, I can use a couple different colors to alter this layer. So here's white. Let's see what happens if I paint white. You see how it's adding white onto this little layer over here? That means I am making things appear that I can work with over here. Okay, let me go ahead and erase that. I think I can use my eraser. Let me try it. It might not work. If not, then I'm going to use black. Yep, that works fine. Use your eraser and that's going to work to put your black back on there. And so basically you're basically painting white onto the mask and then you're erasing it to black. So just imagine you're painting white on black. So now that I'm here, I can airbrush this in, in whatever way I want. Just so I have that layer selected and I have it unlocked because I'll often have my uh, transparency lock turned on and you got to have it turned off to work it. But now that I have that, I can paint in here with my airbrush tool. Here we go. And there you go. And you can see that the neck is un is unhindered. So I can do whatever I want um, to the face and the neck won't be touched or whatever. The shirt isn't touched because it's on a separate layer, everything like that. Um, but I've created this mask, much like a, um, um, they, they do call them paint masks, but there are other names as well. Um, but uh, a template, if you will, to keep the paint off of um, anywhere that I don't want it to go. So now let's also talk about where this can come in handy in other ways as well. Um, let me go ahead and erase this mask layer. And let me turn my transparency on here. And I'm just going to paint up this face as if I was doing my normal stuff, okay? Um, let's go ahead and start with um, some deep magenta to do my shadows. And what I'm going to do is I can start painting this in here. But here's the problem. What I do with this magenta is I change it. I change it from normal to multiply, and then I drop its opacity. See the problem? It needs to be on its own layer to work properly. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to put it on its own layer. Okay, now if I add it on its own layer, then, and I try to paint now, okay, obviously I'm off the area that I want to be in. I only want to fill in the face, and I'm coloring in the whole area. Well, that's not good, especially if I'm using an airbrush. So that's not going to work. So now what if I, okay, here we go. What if I take the skin tone and I multiply it and I keep the transparency lock on and I color it now? Well, that's all well and good and it might even work when I drop my opacity and I put my multiply on. But here's the thing. My face just got more saturated and that's because I already have skin tone on there. Well, that's fine. No problem. Let's just go ahead and take the eraser and erase all the skin and only leave um, and just take everything off and I'll go ahead and paint in with that. Well, why isn't it working? It's not working. Well, that's because you've erased everything and there's nothing for the transparency lock to read. This is where a mask is important because right now I can't do anything even though I've taken it from the original layer, I've multiplied it, and I've also turned on the transparency. But since there's nothing there for the transparency to read anymore, it's useless. So what do I do? Masking. It's a beautiful thing. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go to here, right click, select from layer, create selection. Perfect. I'll make a new layer, I'll hit my mask button, it makes a mask, now I can go in here with my red, and I can paint as I want, nothing else affected. It's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful morning, la la la, okay, so yeah, I, I need to stick with two tutorials and less singing, okay, 
I can do the Bee Gees thing. <laughs> Staying alive. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to drive you insane. Okay. So, and I got this all in here all painted in. Now I can go ahead and go to normal multiply. And then I can drop my opacity. And you can see that it adds the shadow as I want it to. No problem. That was easy. And this goes so much further than this. If I want to, I can take this layer. And I can multiply it again. So now I have two layers with masks. I can erase. I can Let me turn off the back, back layer here so you can see. I can erase everything on the layer. But my mask is still there. And it's still serving its purpose. So now if I want to, I can grab my airbrush. And I can get my red that I do for my skin tones. Uh, that I do for the blood tones that I like to put in here. I'm going to drop my brush density because I want it light. And I'm going to go ahead and paint in some rosy red cheeks. Rosy red chin. And let's go ahead and put a heavier dosage on the nose here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Now I actually have the set to multiply still because remember you copied the layer from the first one. So I'll set it to normal. Okay. And if I bring up my opacity it's going to be blowout. But I can darken in this stuff here with this red that I have. And then, like I like to do, normal, multiply, and drop my opacity until it puts this nice, cute red on the cheeks. And I can turn on the skin and the shadows and put the shadows back in. All with those masks. Once again, you can't do that with a transparency lock because when you erase everything off of the transparency lock, you lose it. And you really do want to keep all this stuff separated if you're working with different multiplies or if you're working with any of these different effects to help with your lighting or whatever the case may be. So you can't, you don't want to keep it all together if you're going to be using the um, pull down, excuse me, if you're going to be using the pull down menu here on the right hand side. That's the key thing, you know, you got to figure out what works for you. But let me say, these tools over here are absolutely amazing. Let me take this just a little bit further and show you guys the other options. The same idea goes through with the idea of erasing everything. Okay. And then let's say I want to make one side of his face really dark and one side of his face really light. I can use a lot of the tools here to do that. Let's go ahead and grab my magenta. And I can airbrush in the darker side of the face on one side. And my... My mass is going a little slow. My pen's going a little slow just because I'm working with such a large layer. And I'm going to bring up the uh, saturation, uh, not the saturation, but the uh, um, opacity a little bit. And then I'm going to go the other direction. We'll grab some white. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to erase everything on this layer. Okay. And with the white, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. Actually, I, can, I think I can even use a skin tone, but I'm going to go with white for now, just to make a point. Okay, so I'm painting in the white now. Oh, I get the right brush here. That would help. Oh, sorry. Scrape the, the uh, microphone. All right, see, it's not painting in white, but that's because it's set on multiply. If I go like this, there we go. Now it's starting to show. And then I can do it across the nose, because the nose stands out in the light quite a bit. And I can paint on the chin, because that's going to kind of do the same thing. And then I can take that and I can set it to glow, and it's going to go like... Pfft. It's like this guy's being blinded with a flash on one side of his face. And if I want, I can drop the opacity a little bit and try and make it look a little bit more natural. And there's, let me just say, it, guys, there's tons of different techniques that you can do to do all this stuff. Now let's say, for instance, let me remove all of the different things we've done so far with the masks, including the shading and everything. All right, so we're back to square one. We have all flat tones. Everything's good to go. Let's say, for instance, that I want to go ahead and use the same um, shadow technique that I like using the magenta and using it across the whole piece, but using the same stuff. Well, you got everything in different layers here, so what do we do? Easy fix, guys. Really easy fix. Let's go ahead and turn off all these layers. I'm going to select everything except the, except the outline. I'm going to bring it down here, and I'm going to copy everything. So you can see it says copy next to it. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to combine copies of displayed layer. There we go. Now we have one individual layer. Now here's something important. You see this? You see the white back here? That means that it also grabbed the background. So we don't want the background used. So let's go ahead and just grab the copies. Copy, 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 copy. Right click. Um, selection from layer. Let me see. There's, there's another option here. Uh, there's combined selected layers, but I think that's um, 
more than one. So let's just do this right here. Combine copies. Oh, sorry, guys. I've done this before. I'm a professional. I think. Let's see here. Let's try merge layers. That merges all the layers. Food for thought, guys. Learn stuff before you talk about it on uh, talk about it on advanced tutorials, huh? Okay. So let's see. Combine showing layer. That's going to combine everything. It's going to do basically the exact same thing. So let me try this just for the fun of it. I'm going to move all these layers up against each other. Here we go. Like that. Let's select them all. Right click. Combine selected layers. So you got to have all your layers pushed up against each other that you're going to combine. Combine selected layer. There we go. So now we have all of our skin tones. So I can turn off everything else now except for that layer, and you can see it's going to turn that all on. Now that I have that as one selected piece, all that stuff in one layer, now I can go ahead and right-click, Selection from Layer, Create Selection. Now it's got everything selected, 100% everything. The only thing it excludes is outlines, okay? And that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and make, um, make a new layer, make a mask. You don't have to make a new layer. I like to make a new layer. Okay, so now I got the mask selected. You can see that's in there. I'm going to select that. I can actually delete the uh, one layer. Now that I have this and I've erased it and I still have all of my other layers turned on, let's go grab my deep magenta. Grab my pen tool so I can draw it in really quick. Go on the mask layer. And you guys know where I'm going. It's kind of self-explanatory here. I can go ahead and paint in the hair. I can paint in the eyes. Uh, the shadows, this is all for shadows, and, and the bottom of the ears, the inside of the ears, and like I said, I'm not trying to make a beautiful piece here, I'm trying to teach you guys, so do not mind my terrible artwork. Okay, get underneath the shirt. Let's make sure that the layers are above everything, that's very key. Put your, put your mask layer above everything else so you can see what you're doing. Okay, get all that drawn in here, that's fine. And like I said, not perfection here. If I was trying to be perfect, I'd do things a lot differently. But this is my technique for masking. Okay, so I got that drawn in there. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. Okay, stop being a perfectionist, Tim. Cut it out. All right, there we go. Normal, multiply, drop that. And there you go. You can see that we've applied that shadow all the way across the board from the hair all the way into the, uh, all the, way into the shirt in the bottom. Okay? Now, let's also talk about really quickly here doing teeth and eyes and things like that. You got two options. I'm going to make uh, multiply. I'm going to just double up on that layer. So now I have two of them that are both for eyes and teeth. Let's do one at a time. Once again, with eyes and teeth, I made a new layer. I have everything painted on the layer, so if I want to, I can lock my transparency, grab my white from my airbrush, and very quickly just paint in the white to give it that 3D effect. Ch -ch 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 -ch. There we go. Cool. And you can see I can quickly just do whatever I want with that. Or, let me delete that layer. Actually, excuse me, let me go back. There we go. Or, as I said before, we'll go ahead and make a mask. And you can right-click. Selection from layer. Create selection. Create the mask. We can erase everything from the mask. Remember, you cannot do that. Just reminding you guys again, you cannot do that with your um, with your other one. So there we go. It's still there. I'll just put it above the other layer that has the, the base. Airbrush. Tap in a couple times some white into the eyes. Make it a bit smaller so I can make it more pronounced. There we go. Same thing with the teeth. And there you have it. Okay, so you did the same thing. You can actually turn off your background layer if you want. And the nice thing about doing it this way as well, because you have... Um, let me see if I can explain this. We'll, we'll turn off the background and we'll turn off the teeth, but you can still see in the background, if I turn off everything else, you can still see that I have some white there. And that's because I painted that in over transparency, okay? Even now, you could still turn on transparency lock and affect only that area, even with the mask turned on. So now he'll have some really crazy teeth once I pop in everything again. There you go. Uh, demon kid, you know, or, you know, alien form 
Who knows? But you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of different options, and they can all be combined and tied together to work together as one single piece. Okay? Um, I hope that that helped you guys out. I hope that you enjoyed this quick tutorial on this. Uh, remember um, that you guys get first dibs on all the tutorial options. Um, I believe, actually, this person may have actually been on YouTube in normal. I'm going to go ahead and send this to him and see if he can watch it as a, as a gift from me and say, here, this is on Patreon. If you want more, join us, you know. Uh, but, guys, you guys come first. First and foremost, so if you have any questions on tutorials, go on to patreon.com forward slash to Michael Arts, log in because you're already a patron, and make sure that you go ahead and leave me a, um, uh, a personal message or even comment on the page and let me know what you want to learn. I love talking with you guys. Don't be afraid to have conversations with me. Um, as all of you might have seen uh, last night, uh, uh, which today is uh, 3-18, so March 18th. Uh, last night, I sent messages to all of y'all, just checking on how each one of you are doing and just trying to keep in contact with everybody. So don't be afraid to uh, chat with me. I'm here for you guys, and I'm going to do my best to keep uh, coming with new tutorials and things. And like I said, I hope this helps out. Now, just to let you know, this is Manga Studio EX5, but a lot of these same techniques can be also used in Photoshop. So go give it a shot over there. There's a lot of different buttons. They might look a little different. They might look the same, but you can use masks and you can use the transparency lock the exact same way that you use it here in Manga Studio. Okay? Food for thought, guys. Thanks a lot for supporting me here on Patreon. Uh, love that you guys are here. Remember that $3 patrons are going to be a part of a once-a-month live stream with me, $3 and above. And uh, I am looking forward to meeting with you guys and chatting with you guys and answering your questions there. So keep that in mind if you are not of the $3 uh, value. And if you are above the $3 value, you're already grandfathered in. So welcome to the club. Thank you very much, guys. I will see you guys soon on another video, either on YouTube or here on Patreon. Thanks, guys.